Now, there's a lot of uh, uh, different types of um, ways to defend the pick and roll, and some can be really complicated, okay? So we can talk about, for example, let's say you're on the ball, come and set this on ball screen, and you're here, okay? We can talk about going under the screen, we can talk about going over the screen, we can talk about switching it, everything happens on the ball, cool. On the, off the ball, we can talk about our triangle away. Let me get one more, just jump on that block for me. We talk about, for example, and we did this a little bit in Perth, where any time, any time a pick and roll is happening, and watch it, you'll pick up on it, they still do it at times. Any time there's a pick and roll, no matter where your man is, off the ball, we either have to have this formation of triangle away, or go up to the elbow, go up to the elbow for me, this formation of triangle away. No matter where my man is, okay? So go back to where you were. We would be in that formation of triangle away if you were defending me here in the corner and you're gonna collapse in and protect the paint, okay? And that person at the nail, if they're defending the trailer big. Now, this does a great job in protecting the keyway, but it leaves you vulnerable now to shooters out in the perimeter. And it's not great. It's not great. It's good against a team that wants to get on the rim. It's maybe good against a team that's not a three-point shooting team. If you're under 16 nationals, I remember doing this a bit, we did this. Because we're basically saying, okay, under 16 nationals, Port came back the year before, at best, kids were shooting at 27% from three. Yeah. All right, we'll test the waters on that, we'll take the paint, great, all right? But the higher level you go up, suddenly now this is Chris Golden in the corner. Are you gonna leave him this wide open for an uncontested three? So, drop out for us. So what we say now, or the way we wanna do it is, the same way in a one-on-one, -on -one, you wanna be able to defend the ball for three dribbles, the same way that you wanna protect the three and you wanna protect the key way, now it becomes virtually a two on two. And it's gonna be the same rules. I'm not gonna force the rotations off the ball if I don't have to. So you'll be in support. Let's say that's a real gun shooter. So you might just be just, just weak side of split. Right there, perfect, ball of man. But the rotation's not gonna happen if she doesn't have, if my man's here in the corner, let's say you're a shooter, you're a lights out shooter, I'm not opening up here watching this, nah. This is a shooter in the corner, I'm here, and I'm that close stance again. So now, the same way we talked about, you have to be able to defend the ball one on one, now we're defending the ball two on two. So let's say, for example, I want the screen defender to do as little as possible. You're back here, all right? Now, it's still one on one with the screener, with your teammate. So, what is most important right now in terms of what's the best opportunity for her to score? At the rim, at the foul line, at the three point, all of the above? You gotta protect them all, okay? And this is what we're saying, it's on you now. So just because there's a pick and roll happening doesn't take you, doesn't put you off the hook for having to defend the ball. So, where is the screen being set? Now this puts the three point line in jeopardy. Okay, especially if the big is playing off. All right, so the same way, let me take your spot real quick and just drop off for a second. The same way here, then I'm going no middle, no middle. If I hear screen coming, okay, and the screen is coming to be set right there, hold it there. If I can keep her away from the screen, perfect. But my philosophy on the pick and roll might be to send them to the screen. Or more importantly, you might have just given a jab step and now she's got the angle to use the screen. Because basketball's dynamic and it's moving, okay? So in this scenario, I need to protect the three. If you go rip through and I go under that screen, you're pulling up for a shot, okay? If come back, you use that screen and I try and go over, and I get hit on this screen, and you keep going to the basket, I give up the layup, yeah? I still gotta be able to defend the ball. 
So what ends up happening here is come back for us. The same rules apply, okay? I have to crawl in. I have to be right in her grill. I'm gonna be making her uncomfortable. So if she wants to use the screen, I can absorb the contact and I can try and fight through. Now, even if I get clipped for this through on the screen, even if I get hit on it and you start to go over, I want to pursue the ball, okay? I don't want to rotate just yet. I want to pursue the ball and take away that three-point shot. So that way she can't pull up for the three-pointer because I'm right next to her, okay? So I'm going to chase her off the three-point line. Good, right? Back's a little, uh, big's a little bit back. Now you're in this area, okay? Now I have to recover and try and get back in front. But if I don't, she pulls up for this shot. Cool. It's a 43% shot at best, it's only worth two points. So we'll live with that, all right? So I wanna pursue, you're doing a good job just like trying to slow her up because she's gonna see the number, she's gonna see that it's not a straight line drive, she's gonna slow up a little bit and it's gonna give me an opportunity here now to get back in front. If I don't, we call switch, I take your man, you take my man and then we protect the basket which is the highest uh, valued shot. So everybody clear on that? I just want to talk about that because we talked about the defensive principles. When it's one on one, the same rules apply when it's two on two. We don't need to force rotations just because the screen's coming. Treat the screen as if like anything else, it just becomes now two on two with support.